and Jackie coming Sunday to NBC. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Mayer. Welcome in to Live at 11. And I'm Teresa Rodriguez. We've got a lot going on this morning. We're going to be chatting with talk show host Bill Donahue and Soviet talk star Vladimir Posner. Also, Larry King talks with some of the great movie legends of all time and we'll talk with Larry live. Plus tips on how not to get ripped off when you try to clean up after all this water damage. And we'll talk about this night's season premiere of L.A. Law. All ahead, live at 11. An important message for accident victims from Reuben and Reuben. If you've been injured in an accident, you're worried about your health, medical bills, lost wages, and your future. At Reuben and Reuben, we know how to help you and will personally handle every aspect of your case. Let our years of experience dealing with insurance companies and the legal system get you every dollar you deserve. Call 892-0111 or 463-3030 in Broward. Let Reuben and Reuben help you. We have a great breakfast at the International House of Pancakes restaurants. I'll have the Rudy Tootie. The Rudy Tootie fresh and pretty breakfast. Uh, I'll have the Rudy Tootie. Two eggs, two bacon, two sausage, two fruit top pancakes, strawberry, blueberry, peach, or cinnamon apple. People just love the breakfast. I'll have the Rudy Tootie. They just hate the name. Rudy Tootie, only three thirty-three all day, seven days a week. Only three thirty-three at IHOP now. Good morning. Hope you're drying out wherever you are this morning. Well, we're going to try to spread a little cheer and a little sunshine this morning one way or another, although actually things are uh, quite a bit better than a they've been the past couple of days, although it's hard to believe that after all these days of rain that there's anything left up there to come down. And it looks like there's still a little bit, huh? We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but first, we have some new and interesting things coming up for you today. For instance, tonight's the premiere of L.A. Law for the new season, and NBC won't even tell us what's going to happen. So later on, live at 11, we're going to let you call in and tell us where you think the season is going to go for L.A. Law. Could be anywhere. And something else is premiering tonight, Joe's Stone Crabs. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out something about the mystique of this South Florida tradition. Not so traditional is all this nasty weather we've been having. And as I said earlier, Bob Weaver is going to talk to us about that. A little well, more the, rain in the forecast? Well, there's still some more showers around, a few thunderstorms around. The Keys, in fact, just a short time ago, they put out some water spout warnings. But this is really the tail end. Things are getting a lot better. And uh, there's an overall improvement in the weather. So uh, I think if you want to make your plans for the next couple of days, just... Uh, Go ahead, because it's going to be a pretty good weekend coming up. There'll be a few showers and a few thunderstorms around. First, uh, let's take a look at the good news, and here it is. Uh, before we really tell you about the overall picture, just remember, the air mass is still moist, so you're going to get some showers and a few thunderstorms around. The temperatures will be from the mid to the upper 80s. And then, as we... Uh, take a look at everything else a little bit later. I'll just show you why it's getting better and where everything is going and what's happening. But in the meantime, there's a lot of other things happening, right? Yes, there is. We're going to have right. our interview with uh, Phil Donahue and Vladimir Posner in just mm -hmm. a couple seconds. And uh, first, I think we're going to check in with Marianne Murciano, though, to see what's happening uh, in the headlines this morning. Good morning, Marianne. Hi, Terry. Uh, first of all, I want to find out who got the stone crab assignment. And is there any left for me? Did they bring any into the studio today? <laughs> Anyway, well, I'm sure you'll reserve a claw for me. Uh, still topping our news at 11 o'clock. The weather, the picture is getting better. You'll remember the trailer park in Northeast Dade was almost underwater yesterday. This one, this morning, the water has gone down, but it's still not enough to let the folks go back home. About 100 are still inside Red Cross shelters across the country. County, that is. Many spent the night there not able to reach their houses. The Red Cross is encouraging anyone who's been put out by rain damage to contact them. In Broward, you can call 763-9900, extension 323. And in Dade, that number is 326-6699.
Some 1,800 count, hundred Cuban communists, that is, are open to opening their party congress today, and we'll see if the sweeping changes across the world will have any effect on the island nation. Since the party's last gathering in 1986, the socialist bloc has disintegrated. Cuba's economy has declined, and Fidel Castro has become more politically isolated. Channel 4 reporter Kerry Sanders is just back from Cuba, and he'll report on his visit later today on the Channel 4 News. The budget axe has fallen at the Dade County School Board on the chopping block. Forty people who lose their jobs. Dade County School Board voted in the cuts over loud protests by teachers and students alike. By December 1st, transportation to magnet schools will be completely gone and 40 people will lose their administrative jobs. Deeper cuts are expected in 1992. We told you yesterday that former Centrist Chairman David Paul was going to court to try to get his legal fees paid. Well, this morning there is a decision. A judge will let Paul spend $250 an hour for an attorney to defend him against charges he looted Centrist accounts. A federal magistrate was also named to settle other disputes between Paul and the Office of Thrift Supervision. Finally, Pee Wee Herman might be off the hook. His publicists say they've got a tape from inside the Sarasota Adult Theater where Paul Rubens was arrested on indecent exposure charges. The time-coded security camera videotape shows Rubens in the theater lobby at the time when arresting officers said he was committing the crime. So far, Sarasota police have not made any sort of a comment. That gets you up to date right now. I'll be back with another news update in half an hour. And now here's Bob. We all know Phil Donahue. He has been uh, coming into our living rooms with his Donahue show now for, uh, would you believe, nearly a quarter century. Vladimir Posner may be called the Phil Donahue of the Soviet Union, although he is certainly well known now in this country. Now the two are joining forces for a new TV show called Posner and Donahue. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us this morning. Our pleasure. Thank Bob. you. Phil, what's the show all about? The show is all about world events, um, uh, U.S. events that influence the world. Uh, the show will feature uh, satellite interviews with people from around the world. We're very proud that uh, the program will be airing in the Soviet Union, uh, as well as other countries. And uh, we have the unique opportunity of bringing the perspective of a man who has lived for 38 years in the Soviet Union. And like me, he is a news junkie, and uh, we're very excited about a ch uh, having the chance to become a part of the... Uh, a number of shows that weekly attempt to analyze, argue about, and speak to the issues about which all Americans and people in Russia and the other republics, as well as Eastern Europe, everywhere should care. Phil, it sounds like you're talking about the kind of topics that would not make it commercially today on The Donahue Show. Well, we're very proud, uh, Bob, that uh, The Donahue Show, uh, in spite of uh, uh, ratings uh, indications to the contrary, has continued to speak to issues that you and I would agree are important. Ariel Sharon's been on our program, we've had the head of Nicaragua on our program, the President of Ireland's been with us, but it is also true that those programs, as you indicate, did not really draw a whole bunch of people into the tent. Uh, with this program, with Poser and Donahue, we have an opportunity of doing these programs without the kind of uh, ratings and competitive concern that I must continue to bring to the Donahue show for it in order for it to remain uh, commercially uh, viable. Mr. Posner, there have been dramatic changes in the Soviet Union in the last six weeks. Uh, some, of course, we even question whether there is a Soviet Union anymore, but has life changed there for the average citizen? Of course it has. Uh, the changes that have occurred in the Soviet Union influence the life of every single person. The fact that now as you say, there is no more Soviet Union. There are independent republics with their own policies, uh, with new embassies coming in from other countries. There is an economic uh, union up to a point, and probably that will continue to develop. But life has changed in every single way, and more importantly, I think, uh, in the sense of the freedom that people enjoy, which is what they stood up for during those three days of the putsch. What about uh, press freedom? Do we have that at this point, or, or are we near that or approaching it? That's an interesting question, uh, because I keep getting it time and time again. And the answer I give is, you know, even before the putsch, I think in some respects there was more freedom of the press in the Soviet Union to challenge really serious issues than there is even in the United States, and more willingness to do so. And now that's beyond the question of the doubt. I think it's because that the country's in a state of flux. You know, th there's still a lot of things that haven't been put in place. The laws aren't really there. So that the journalist can just about do anything at all and not really worry. Uh, there are no rules, not even uh, unwritten rules. There's a, I'd say there's even some kind of um, anarchy of the press. 
which is more than freedom and not necessarily good. Would you dare have thought that six, seven, eight weeks ago that this could have happened so quickly? No, I don't think so. I, you know, the, the possibility of a coup was something I spoke about, but when it happened, I felt that it was going to be successful and that those people would be around for several years. I don't think there was anyone who really believed that it would be over in three days. There are people now who say, oh, we knew all the time, but that's not true. It was really very scary. Phil, the, the show was in the works, was it not, before the coup? Yes. Yes. It, it was. We, we had agreed in principle. Yes, and I thought I lost a partner. <laughs> Now, what were your I, thoughts? Honestly, I figured this guy's going somewhere in handcuffs. Um, yeah. You know, and finally, you know, he called then, uh, like two days uh, later, uh, or three days later, and first thing he said was, we won, we won. So that was a long three days for me. Uh, first concerned about uh, his well-being, as well as his wife's uh, well-being, and uh, uh, like Vladimir, I never anticipated this to be a three-day event. All right, Phil Donahue, Vladimir Posner, thanks so much for joining us this morning. The program Posner and Donahue, and it's airing right here on Channel 4. Gentlemen, thank you both for being with us live at 11. And that program will air every week here on Channel 4, but it has no permanent time slot, at least not right now. So you'll have to watch your TV guide or the newspaper to find out uh, the time to watch each week. Now, Vladimir Posner was on Donahue's show on a couple of occasions. He's been on lots yeah. of times, yeah. So did it come as a surprise to you to see the pair? No, not really. I think it's a perfect match. And I think, uh, contrary to what, to what Phil said, um, I, I think that he really needed a new outlet. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think, he, I mean, he alluded to it. He right. has not been able to get into the real meaty, uh, newsy, political-type topics on Donahue, because when you do that, you can lose audience. You sure can. Well, looking forward to it. I guess we'll have to check the listings. Yep. All righty. Well, there's still a whole lot more ahead live at 11 this morning. If your house wasn't damaged by all this rain, you probably know someone who wasn't as lucky. We know someone, the producer of the show, as a matter of people. fact. Yeah. yeah. Someone's got a boat here that sank the other day. Mm -hmm. We'll give you some hints on how not to get taken to the cleaners when you fix your damage, whatever it is. And you'll snap at the chance to find out what all the crabby commotion on the beach is. And Larry King, live. I'll talk with the former South Florida resident about his new interview program with the stars. All ahead, live at 11. Stay with us. It won't kill you to go out with him once. Uh, You're not getting any younger, you know. My head. And he's a very successful mortician. Where's my Anison 3? To relieve a splitting headache, reach for Anison 3. It's strong. And Anison 3 is 100% aspirin-free. Glad you're feeling better. Cecil's here. Anison 3, aspirin-free pain relief for splitting headaches. This weekend, a gigantic art fair with the original works from over 100 struggling artists. Over 2,000 original oil paintings will be selling for under $20, including sofa-sized 24 by 36-inch paintings. Master Charge, Bank America, personal checks accepted. Look how this 1995 original oil adds to this arrangement. A one-of-a-kind art fair. This Sunday only, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in Candle at the Dadeland Marriott and in Fort Lauderdale at the Sunrise Hilton. Free parking, free admission, and free door prices. I'm attorney David Singer. A lot of people ask me why I became an attorney. The answer is simple, to inform troubled people of their rights. It's an honor and a challenge to represent someone who's been injured in an accident, especially a bad accident where they've needed hospitalization or surgery. They need help. That's why I became an attorney. Please give me the chance to help you. That's nice, dear. I'll never find another Roger. Knock on wood. How can you two sit there eating breadsticks? Roger was one of a kind. You see the Stella Doro breadstick? That's one of a kind. Light, crunchy, and no cholesterol. You can never say that about Roger. Of course, sir, is Jojo Spike killer. <laughs> Stella Doro breadsticks. We bake like nobody else bakes. We sure have gotten our share of rain, a lot more than our mm. share of rain in the past three days. Remember we had a drought a little while ago? Yeah, I wonder how Lake Okeechobee, if it's doing yeah. any better, if it was affected. What what about Lake Lake Maybe Bob can tell us. Yeah. Lake Okeechobee was doing very well before we had all this oh, really? rainfall. But uh, I think you're going to find now that uh, as we get past the next month or two, we're going to go back to dry weather 
and it won't be too long before you'll be wanting some more rainfall. But for the time being, we have had enough, right? Right. Let's take a look and see what's going on, first of all, as we look at the radar. Notice, not much around, not nearly as much as we've had over the past couple of days. You can see it all. It's uh, moving towards the northeast, that is, away from the coast. There are still some pretty good showers and a few thunderstorms right over the Keys. A little earlier, there were water spouts, uh, so you folks that are going to do any boating from there, uh, just be prepared for that. Now, look at the uh, satellite picture. Still plenty of moisture. but you have to really uh, take a good look to see what's going on. Notice how that weather is starting to move towards the north. There's low pressure developing well off the coast, uh, east of uh, St. Augustine, and it's continuing to move very slowly north. With it, it's going to pull a lot of the weather, but some of it is still going to remain here. And I show you the still picture here so you can get an idea as to what's happening. You can see how it thins out a little bit as you come to the south and over south Florida. Much uh, less in the way of moisture than we've had, but there's still enough moisture over the area to trigger off a few showers and a few thunderstorms this afternoon. Here are some of the totals for the past couple of days. Just some of these are absolutely fantastic. If I tell you that if a major hurricane came by here, it probably, in a lot of cases, would not produce that much rainfall. Miami International, 12 and a half Miami Springs, almost 16 inches of That's rain. Incredible. It is, isn't it? Hollywood is 14.26, Lauderdale 9.37, a couple of areas got away, West Kendall 238, Miami Beach had 4.53. So all in all, things are getting better, folks. You have a nice weekend coming up. Uh, there will be some showers around still, but it's not going to be anything disastrous. You're going to see the sun, so you can go out and have a good time. The seas will be coming down also. You've always complained about the drainage system in South Florida, but really no drainage system could handle what we've, what we've been getting here. Well, it wouldn't really matter because we don't have any. I mean, uh, I, now where I drive sometimes at home, uh, you could have two inches of rainfall and you see a lot of cars stuck. There's yeah. just, uh, there, we don't have really what you call a drainage mm -hmm. system. Like in New York, they have all the sewers and everything else, and yeah. the water runs down there. Take care of that tree. You had a tree that uh, you I lost in the backyard. I had a tree that huh, toppled Phil? over. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to save it. Uh, the folks uh, tell me that it won't survive, but I'm going oh. to try to save its life if well, you're, I can. You're not the only one with problems. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. all this rain this week has left a lot of us with a lot of problems uh, resulting from this water. A lot of house damage, too. That's right, Bob. But, uh, you know, you might not want to run out to talk to your insurance agent at least not just yet. Our consumer reporter Bob Pisani found out firsthand when his own house was damaged by water. In his case, it was a broken water pipe. But the same advice applies. Let's watch. I got out of bed and my feet went squish in the carpet. Water was everywhere. I ran into the bathroom and water was gushing out underneath the sink. I went downstairs and there was water raining through the ceiling into the library. I went down to the first floor and there was water raining onto the kitchen floor, kitchen table. Everything was soaked. A burst pipe had been running for over five hours and the damage was extensive. I contacted my insurance adjuster but wisely decided not to settle with him immediately. The most important thing for a homeowner is uh, they should never talk to the adjuster or settle with the adjuster. They should let their builder do that. Was he ever right? It looked to me like there was about $10,000 in damage. But within a week, the rugs began to rot, the ceilings fell apart, the tile floors and the plywood beneath them buckled and had to be torn up, and the entire house needed to be painted. Total damages, nearly $30,000. All of it covered by insurance. That's really the beauty of insurance is to prevent the uh, catastrophes. But it helps if you're prepared. We made sure our policy included full replacement cost for personal items. Some policies will only pay actual cash value, which is what you would get if you sold the item, not replaced it. Replacement policies cost about 10% more, but they're worth it. The replacement cost for my dining room table was about $2,000, but only a couple hundred dollars in cash value. But don't think that the insurance company just handed me a check for $30,000. Not only do my wife and I have to deal with all this chaos, but the mortgage company is also involved. After all, they own the house as much as we do. They've got to approve all the work that's done and all the cleanup. Well, at least once it's over, I'll have a practically new house. Although I have dismantled our sink, and I now have a permanent fear of running water. For NBC News, I'm Bob Pisani. It's just what we needed, another Bob on this show. <laughs> if you'd like more information from the Insurance Information Institute, you can give them a call. The number is 1-800-942-4242. That's 
4242. You know, the exact same thing happened to me on a smaller scale in July. A pipe burst in my ceiling in the kitchen. Oh, okay. The smallest repair was mm -hmm. the pipe. It was 70 bucks to fix the pipe, but it cost a few thousand dollars to fix the uh, peripheral damage on the walls and the floors and the ceiling. And did the insurance come through finally? Did pay, but again, mm -hmm. the same thing. The, the check had to be signed by me, my wife, yeah. and the mortgage company. Took a little longer yeah, than you did. thought. Took a yeah. long, we're still not through yet. We still got huh. the walls to do. Hope, well, you didn't get any it's leaks never, this time it's, around, it's right? Never ending, really. And, and no leaks this time around. No, no problems right. this time. Okay, good. Well, tonight's a big night. The season premiere of L.A. Law. And already NBC's got everyone's curiosity up with a mysterious promotion for the show. You've no doubt noticed those provocative promotional spots about the L.A. Law airing here on Channel 4. But in case you miss them, get a load of this. The show that will surprise you. The show that will stun you. The show that will shock you. Brace yourself for the season premiere of L.A. Law on NBC Thursday. Okay, so what happens to Leland? Well, you know what they want us to think. Uh, sure. Obviously. Well, you, you've you been watching it. You don't no longer watch it as much because it's past your bedtime. Right. right. But, but uh, uh, the uh, one of the senior partners last year, Ro Rosalind Shays, died mm -hmm. falling down an elevator shaft. Not a little bit different. She never got into the elevator. The doors opened. She was talking to somebody and walked in, not seeing that the elevator wasn't yeah, there. Straight down. Boing, gone. Gone. Kaput. Off the series. How many so. times have you done? I mean, not fallen down the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many times have you shafted? <laughs> no, but I mean, how many times you go into an elevator? You push the button and you walk in the elevator. You don't even think about it, right? As soon as the door starts opening, you will then, now. Huh? And now I'm going to start. I how wait many, about fifteen. But how many minutes. times have you walked in an elevator and pressed a button and mm -hmm. the whole thing shook? Oh, you yeah. know, and no, you that, get a little scared happens. for a yeah, second, which yeah. it was just yeah. the other day I was in an elevator, the lights went out and it stopped. Here you are, you're huh? back. No, I was in the hallway, I had a short circuit. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so what do you think is going to happen? We'd like to know, and we're going to open the phone lines to let you tell us. Call us with your prediction. We're just going to have some fun here. In Dade County, the number is 372 11 o'clock. That's 372 1100. In Broward, the number is 938 WTVJ. Again, those numbers in Dade, 372-1100 in Broward, 938-WTVJ. So go ahead and call in now. We'll talk to you in just a minute or two. But first, live at 11, doctors solve a medical mystery with a special kind of paint. We'll explain how they're finding cancer using this new high-tech method. And here's another look at the numbers to call us about L.A. Law. Live at 11 continues in a minute. You don't need a holiday or special occasion to enjoy the delicious taste of honey-baked ham. It's perfect for breakfast in bed or as a sandwich for the busy executive's lunch. And when you crave something really tasty for a late-night snack, there's just nothing like it. So why wait for a special occasion? Visit the Honey Baked store today and take home a honey-baked brand ham. Available only from the Honey Baked store. Located in Miami, Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale, Pompano, and West Palm. If you're not buying your diamonds from Bert Belenke's House of Diamonds, you're paying too much. Bert Belenke's House of Diamonds is the home of rarely found, but most desirable internally flawless diamond solitaires. This is the perfect diamond for that perfect occasion. Let us show you how to save money when buying diamonds. Buy with confidence from Bert Belenke's House of Diamonds. Famous a half century for guaranteed lowest prices, highest quality, and total satisfaction. Town & Country Center, Kendall, Lemons Plaza, North Miami Beach. K best for Publix. Okay, I admit it. When it comes to saving money, I love the thrill of the chase. You know, tracking down a deal, scaring up a bargain. But now, Publix is making it almost too easy. They've got these green bonus special tags all over the store. I mean, we're talking more goodbyes on even more stuff. Now I ask you, where is the challenge in that? Look for real value with more bonus specials than ever at Publix. That cough sounds bad. When her little patient is coughing, it's the biggest thing on mom's mind. That's why there's Robitussin Pediatric. Great tasting cough and cold relief. Formulated just for kids. From the brand more doctors and pharmacists recommend. Robitussin Pediatric gives long-lasting cough relief day or night so both the patient and the doctor can rest comfortably. Robitussin Pediatric Cough and New Cough and Cold Formula. Recommended by Dr. Mom.
and welcome back. Making health news, a new test for cancer that's done with paint. And it's the tiniest part of our bodies that are being painted with this paint, although actually it's kind of a reflective dye, not actually mm -hmm. a paint. Our high-tech reporter Richard Hart explains how it works. The brightly colored hot dog shapes in this microscopic view are number four chromosomes. They are glowing because they were painted with a fluorescent dye. Chromosome abnormalities are associated with many of the most serious diseases, but identifying them is more art than science with current black and white methods. A specialist must read genes like tea leaves. The next step, however, is a magic paint designed to adhere to only one chromosome. The fluorescent dye comes in a kit developed by a medical diagnostic firm called Imaginetics and works when painted onto a sample of cells. For example, chronic myelogenous leukemia results when two chromosomes, 22 and 9, exchange parts. Using a whole chromosome paint to stain number 22 bright yellow, only that chromosome should glow. But this one is part yellow. That means it's part 9 and part 22, and that means it's potentially cancerous. What this technology allows us to do is to detect that event very precisely, very quickly. It requires minimal skill. It really is that easy. The cells with potentially cancerous abnormalities just leap out in the colors of the rainbow, and virtually anybody can be trained to sit down at a microscope and find them. This is not a cure for cancer. However, for people who study it and treat it, it is revolutionary. The breakthrough was achieved by a biomedical research team at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, led by Bob Gray and Dan Pinkel, now continuing their work at the University of California in San Francisco. Possible ap applications would include looking at cells to determine if particular abnormalities are present and using that to help classify the type of disease somebody might have. What does it mean to those with cancer and those who treat it? Speed, to analyze cells instantly. Accuracy, detecting smaller concentrations than ever possible before. Identification, to target a specific kind of cancer instead of today's general therapies that ravage the entire body. The transfer from government to market took less than 18 months, making this one of the lab's most important technology transfers to date. For NBC News, I'm Richard Hart. We asked you a couple of minutes ago for your ideas about uh, what might happen on L.A. Law tonight, the season premiere. Mm -hmm. And lots of you are calling in. Let's see what you have to say. I understand we have David from Plantation on the line. Good morning, David. Good morning. What's your theory? Well, it's kind of funny, but maybe the ghost of Rosalind Chase will come back to haunt the firm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Leland is going to fall down the elevator shaft? <laughs> I, I think that's what they want us to think, but I, I, I don't know. It, 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 could be, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, you know what? It could also be, I'm sorry, I'm just no. thinking, it could also be an earthquake, right? That's out in Los Angeles. Could be. That's true. Hey, I never That's thought true. of that. I just... Are, are, are you concerned at all about the major cast changes that are going to go into effect tonight? Well, I, I thought last season when everybody was leaving, I kind of thought that that would be like the death of the series, but I, I don't know. It, it, it looks like it might be able to go on. All right, thanks all right. for calling. Thank you Thank for you. calling. All right, we've got another caller, James from Fort Lauderdale. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. What do you think? I think Rosalind didn't fall all the way down the shaft. I think she caught herself on the side. Wait a minute. Everybody we saw... thinks Rosalind's coming back. <laughs> but, but Rosalind was in the coffin, wasn't she? I mean, didn't we... Well, she there was hey, a f she had know. a funeral, didn't she? Then, but they, they, they didn't show her face, though, did they? You think it's a hoax? The I think it's a hoax. I think Rosalind uh, didn't fall all the way down. She but probably she caught she's... herself on the side. And she's going to come back. Well, you know, everything is possible. It is TV. Well, I tell you, the, you the writers could be listening to this. They should be. We may, we may have another Dallas thing where... What, what do you think happens to Leland? I think Leland might fall down the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> For good, huh? We'll all get the yeah. shaft. All right, thanks, James. All righty, thank now, you. Before we get to L.A. Law, remember Tex Watson? He was one of the members of the Manson gang, and mm -hmm. he is now raising a family. But uh, how can he do that if he's still in jail? Well, mm -hmm. I don't know, but Geraldo Rivera says he knows, and he says the details are uh, disgusting. Mm -hmm. And whatever you think of Geraldo, this one is a scoop. Okay, well, tune in for One Manson's Family on Now It Can Be Told today at 4 o'clock. And then tonight on A Current Affair, an interview with the Night Stalker. Well, there's still a lot more ahead in our next half hour, live at 11. Are you feeling a little crabbier today than usual? Let's put it this way. I don't feel crabby, but I feel like a crab. Uh -oh. Because <laughs> Joe's Stone Crabs reopens today, and we'll talk live Yummy. about the big event later. And we've got something small and furry and unusual coming up. I'm excited, but I know what it is. We know what it is, but you've got to stay with us so you'll know what it is when we come back live at 11. HMOs, 
Heaven help you if you need an HMO doctor after 5 p.m. Well, I'm here at 2 in the morning. I work with the Humana Gold Plus plan. There are doctors available around the clock for members. Medicare HMOs? Why should I change? They're all the same. Well, I changed health plans. I went with the Humana Gold Plus plan for two good reasons. More benefits, no premiums. <laughs> HMOs, they're not alike. Not according to this HMO guide. Call today and Humana will send you this booklet, The Truth About HMOs. You can use it to compare plans. Humana will change the way you think about HMOs. Because Humana's been in the healthcare business, operating hospitals for over 20 years, they can offer high quality health care that's affordable, which is why the Humana Gold Plus plan is America's largest Medicare HMO. Isn't it time you called and got the truth about HMOs? Come on, Jeff. This is supposed to be the happiest day of your life. Oh. Everyone gets cold feet. My head. Please come out of the bathroom. Where's my Anison? When you've got a splitting headache, reach for Anison. Anison relieves headache pain better than regular strength bear or bufferin. Glad you're feeling better, Jeff. Here comes the bride. Anison, strong pain relief for splitting headaches. Call the attorneys at Cohen and Cohen now at 1-800-33 Cohen. That's 1-800-33 C O H E N. Visit the Channel 4 booth at this year's Banyan Festival and register to win a friend and signed Banyan Festival poster October 19th and 20th. Call 444-7270. Channel 4 invites you to Bainanza 91, a celebration of Biscayne Bay. One of the many activities happening during Bainanza is the seafood festival of the beautiful and historic Charles Deering Estate. Enjoy great music and crafts as you treat your taste buds to fresh seafood dishes. Saturday and Sunday, October 12th and 13th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 361-4017 for more information. Welcome back into the next half hour of Live at 11. I'm Teresa Rodriguez. It's time for a second look at this morning's headlines. Let's go to Marianne Murciano in our newsroom. And Marianne, if you can hear me, just to let you know, Bob, Bob Weaver and myself are all going to take part in this uh, crab event we have going on Are you later. saving me a claw? I promise. I promise. <laughs> I don't know. I don't smell anything, so <laughs> I don't know if they're here. Anyway, watch out for that animal that uh, Ron McGill's bringing in <laughs> and those claws it's that a are baby. just it's hanging a baby. around. Okay. Well, anyway, let's get to the news. We've just received the first damage estimates for all the flooding in South Florida, and the Red Cross says it'll be at least a whopping one million dollars. One place where there's lots of damage is this trailer park in Northeast Dade, practically underwater for a couple of days. Look at these pictures. Meantime, at Northeast 71st Street, some 15 to 20 yards of seawall is about to fall into the bay, erosion from heavy rains. Well, it's not rain, but the recession that's been keeping tourists away from our state. The folks who estimate these things say about 40.3 million visitors will come to Florida this year. That's down from the original estimate of 41.1 million. Not just the recession, but the high value of the dollars keeping the foreign tourists away. Well, the woman at the center of the controversy surrounding Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas is in Washington this morning. Anita Hill, who says Thomas sexually harassed her, will testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee tomorrow. Thomas will also testify, and so will other unidentified witnesses. We'll have an in-depth discussion on the issue of sexual harassment tomorrow morning, live at 11. For the first time since communism began to crumble around the world, Cuba begins its party congress this morning. 1,800 people are in Santiago de Cuba right now. If Fidel Castro follows tradition, he'll give a lengthy report outlining the state of the revolution. The congress is expected to discuss political and economic questions. And there's a new addition to the Channel 4 news team this morning, but you won't see her reading the news anytime soon. This is Jenna Lynn Halfman, born to Jerry and husband Steve just last night. Jenna tips the scales at eight pounds, two ounces. She doesn't know it yet, but she's also got an older brother. His name is Douglas, and we did speak to Jerry last night. She sounds great. 
She really should. Her labor lasted just four hours. What do you think about that, Terry? What do you think that, uh, are you feeling a little encouraged? That's wonderful. Four hours. Four hours. Uh, I hope we're that lucky. Let us take note. That's the latest check on the news. We'll have a complete report in just half an hour right here on the Channel 4 News at noon. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Marianne. Well, we're all wearing our bibs, and it's for a very good reason. If you just uh, look in this direction, you'll see some crab claws. And we have someone who's joining us who's uh, from Joe's Stone Crab on Miami Beach. We have been waiting for this day for several <laughs> months. Joe's Stone Crabs reopens tonight. Steve Saywitz is here from the restaurant. And before we get started and into the real nitty-gritty of these stone crabs, for those that don't understand, why do you have to close for so long? Because the stone crab season, which lasts between October 15th and May 15th, ends actually on, on May 15th. So between May 15th and October 15th, or, which is five months, uh, and it's also a state law that stone crabs can't be caught between those months. But you serve other things. We do serve other things, but about 80% of what we serve are stone crabs. Is it crabs. that high? Just about. So. What do, we, do they, where do they all come from? In other words, uh, even though you close a portion of the year, there must be other places that uh, could, let's say, send you stone crab. This is true, but we catch our stone crabs in the Florida water. So what Joe serves are actually Florida stone crabs. Oh, I see. I see. They're all from down here. Yes. Well, Steve, when is the best time to go? There are always such incredibly long lines. When is the best time to go? The best time to go is usually at lunchtime or between 5 and 6.30 in the evening. Yes, yeah, you can have them to you like uh, you did today, sure. huh? Everybody gets this treatment. <laughs> I found that. I mean, the, the lines can get up to an hour and a half, two hours and longer. That's true. Uh, we're hoping for that this year, knock on wood, hopefully. You know, but the key is, we got, we got to start getting into these yeah. crabs. Why don't we start this? The key is, you go early. I've gone early many times. You get there 5, 5.30, and there's no lines. Yes, we also have a takeaway, so you can bring them home. That's All a right, good idea. Let's, uh, okay. Okay. What's, special, what's special about your crabs? Go ahead. Yeah. What's special about these? Well, they're difficult to crack. They taste good. They're expensive, though. That's the yeah, problem. Really. How much are they this year? Price is going up again? Uh, no, we remain at the same price as last year, twenty two ninety five for a pound and a quarter to a pound and a half, which is a large size. Did the closing of the Miami Beach dog track uh, hurt business any over there? I think in the beginning it they'll, did. They'll talk, I'll eat. <laughs> Can I have but, a piece of that? I don't think it actually did for you. Uh, we're, we're, so we were sorry to see them go because it was a lot of yeah. fun, a lot of excitement. Those were the good ones. We're running out of time. What Crack these crabs. crabs. Faster. Is this is mustard sauce. Okay. Our mustard sauce, Joe Stone Crab mustard sauce. Right. Made in-house. Oh, Hope right. you don't mind the, uh, the splashing. Mm. Oh, go, that's Bob. all right. Mm. I'm going to... Fantastic, uh, as usual. Mm. I'm going to save this one. Okay. For later. Parting words, we're out of time. Well, okay, well, I know you have an eat. entire staff that's uh, ready to have lunch yeah, here. I'm sure, they'll, I'm sure they'll be demolished. I'll be ready anytime. <laughs> All right, thank you for joining us. And coming up, a man who spent his share of time at Joe's, now he's spending his time talking with celebrities. I love you guys, but I don't trust you. <laughs> there you are. Hello. There you go. Here, here. We'll be, ri we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Larry King Live. It's a primetime CNN program, an overnight radio show. And this morning, it's Larry King Live at 11 here on Channel 4. Hi, Larry. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm fine. Larry, you've got some pretty deep roots in South Florida. Do you remember well, you and I actually uh, kind of worked together for a while? I sure do. Channel 4 is embellished in my heart. I spent 20 years in Miami, broke in in Miami, and some of the best years of my life were spent right where you are at TVJ. We're going to get into talking about your special in a minute, but there is a, a rumor around here that Tony Segreto got his start in television as your makeup man. Tony Segreto, this has never been told before. <laughs> I might as well tell it now that I don't live in Miami anymore. Tony Segreto was uh, found as a foundling. He was a three-day-old or three -day -old baby left at the doors of Channel 4 on <laughs> North Miami <laughs> Avenue. And uh, the then general manager, Bill Brazil, took him in. Uh, Ralph Rennick spotted him and says, that's definitely sports. And they raised him. Uh, Tony Segreto was raised <laughs> to be a sportscaster. He was injected with uh, special fluids from Switzerland so that he remains South Florida's Dick Clark. That is Tony Segreto. And this is not men. No, we should tell it too. Right. Tony Segreto is 81 years old. Uh, Tony Segreto was there when the Orange Bowl was built. And he lives at Channel 4 since he has no home. Uh, he is now, for example, getting coffee for this show. 
And during, uh, for example, Tony Segreto actually thinks hard copy is news. Uh, Tony Segreto has <laughs> been around a long time. And, you know, Larry, uh, the I truth thought should be told. And the Herald has always avoided telling the true story, and they might as well print it now. I thought this was going to be intimidating talking to the king of interviewers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony Segreto, he's a special guy. Tony Segreto, there's, there's a. Uh, Tony Segreto is is like just one in a million. There's just no one quite like him. Thank God. <laughs> you have interviewed you have interviewed probably hundreds or thousands of people in the last twenty years from from nobody to figured start. Out about, yeah, they figured out about. I must have interviewed almost forty thousand people. How do you prepare? Uh, you know, I try not to. I really. Uh, it sounds funny to people, but I like the freshness approach. I really. The less I know, the better. Even when we're on on CNN every night or doing the radio show every night, often I'll go to the radio show and don't know who's on. Honest, I'll, really? I'll go into television. They've, I, for example, our TV show tonight I know is, is about Judge Thomas, but I don't know who the guests are. And I like that. Now, you've got to stay, I'm prepared by life. I read my newspapers, I watch my television, I listen to the radio, I'm aware of what's going on in the world. But I don't like to do specific preparation. Like yeah. when we did the TNT special, I went to Holland, I did Audrey Hepburn. I, I didn't know that, that she was there when the Nazis occupied Holland. That came out during the interview. I like that. And if you have long form time, like I used to have a Channel 4, right. or like doing these specials, and you can really get into things, actually, the less you know, the better. Because then you're more curious. If someone's written a book and I read the book, I'm no longer curious about the book. And no one's ever done the perfect interview, so you have to work the best that fits your style. My style is the least known, the better. In All fact, right. I'd like to do a show where the curtain opens, and when the guest comes out, that's when the audience and I both discover the guest at the same time. I'm going to learn from the king. I'm going to take the questions that I had written down here and just... Throw them away. Throw them away. Tell us I've never done that. I've never had a sheet of questions. <laughs> the, when you do that, the problem, Bob, is often... This is good for young interviewers to know. When you have a list of questions, that becomes like uh, the, the talk show host's phone call or the disc jockey's record. It's a buffer. It's a help. It's a, it's a security blanket. And what you tend to do is not listen to the answer, but look at what your next question is going to be. Right. I listen to answers, and from answers usually come questions. Do you have special kinds of people that you prefer to talk to? Yeah, oh, if I get the perfect guests are people who are, I call a four, not a ten, a four. If they've got four things going for, Sinatra fits this classically. Uh, and, and all three of these guests have it. Jerry Lewis has it, Audrey Hepburn has it to a degree, Debbie Reynolds certainly has it. And that is... They have anger, a little bit of anger, a little chip on the shoulder, sense of humor, ability to laugh at themselves, a passion for what they do, and ability to explain what they do very well. If you have those four attributes, passion, humor, anger, and an ability to put the layman in your shoes, you can't miss. And that, does, that means if you're a ballet dancer or you're the president of the United States, if you have those things, you can't miss as a guest. Has anyone ever intimidated Larry King? Do you ever get nervous interviewing anybody? First time I interviewed Sinatra, a little nervous. He was my hero. He didn't do interviews. Gleason, Jackie Gleason had set it up for me. I was a little scared. But once that started, you start to realize, one, the interviewer is in control. You're in control of this, not me. This is your backyard, not my backyard. And I realized that pretty soon on with Frank. And once you get into it, then it's question answer. And I'm as curious about Frank Sinatra as I am about Clarence Thomas. I'm curious about Jerry Lewis. We've only got about 30 seconds left, Larry. Uh, uh, Jerry has bought a home here in South Florida. He's going to be moving down here. Correct. What, he's almost become a caricature of himself. Now, you talk with him. What's the real Jerry Lewis like? Uh, he said this was the best interview he ever did. I, I like him. In fact, the more I know him, the more I like him. He's a... Jerry Lewis was, the, as Gleason said, the best, the funniest 19-year-old that ever lived. What happened to Jerry Lewis? What, what made Jerry Lewis tick? What caused the breakup? I think we learned all that. I like him a lot, and he's going to do a Nutty Professor too, and he's going to film it in Fort Lauderdale. Larry, a real joy. Thanks for being with us. Always great. See you down there soon. All right. Larry King, live at 11. We'll be back in a minute. Teresa? All right. Thank you, Bob. You know, I'm surprised that Tony hasn't called us. You know, Tony told me he watches this show every morning. He doesn't miss it. So, Tony, I know you're watching, and I know that you're going to let us know what you think of what Larry said. But... He's probably steaming his way in now. <laughs> <laughs> you worked with Larry, didn't you? Yes. Uh, years ago, I wrote a program and produced it. It was called JFK Remembered, and Larry was the narrator, and it was an extremely okay. successful program, and it's the only program... Uh, 
I, I wrote a lot of them, but it's the only one I ever kept on tape, and I still have Aww. it at home. He did a marvelous, marvelous job, and it was extremely successful. He's just a great guy to work with, really. He still seems that way, right? Yeah, he is. He's, For all uh, these years. Just like you. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, I think we have weather to talk about. Do we? Oh, well, let's talk let's about the weather <laughs> then. Why not? All right. Now, a lot of folks uh, that may be traveling around the country, uh, first of all, let me tell you this that things look a lot better. Look at that, all that area moving out to the northeast. You have a lot better weather here. Look at West Palm, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. I guess the Upper Key is still getting some pretty good showers and thunderstorms, and you'll have a few showers here later. If you're traveling and you wanna know what to wear, you don't need the longies yet. Early morning temperatures are a bit on the chilly side, but look how rapidly everything warms up. You'll see 60s, 70s, 80s, and the West again. They're going to have another record-breaking day with 90 and 100 degree readings yesterday. All through Southern California, they had temperatures at near 100 degrees. They were breaking records everywhere, but otherwise, the overall temperatures were pretty, uh, pretty nice. And it was uh, Bob is going up to uh, Chicago, mm -hmm. and uh, he thought he was going to need his overcoat and everything. And uh, but uh, he's not even going to see any snow. No, I don't think. Just a little jacket or That's right. But he'll have a one, he'll have yeah. a wonderful time. Oh, I'm sure he will. 102 Southern California. Yes, uh, it's really boiling out there when it when they don't get the wind off the water there mm. and the upwelling it really gets hot. Well, thank you, Bob. We've got another place where it's kind of hot. It's uh, actually going to be a hot time in the old town of Seville, Spain next summer, set to commemorate the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's voyage to the New World. Channel 4 travel reporter Paul Ryan takes us to the spot from which Columbus set sail. Next year, Seville throws a party called Expo 92 in honor of what Christopher Columbus began here in Seville 500 years ago. The fair wraps around a monastery where Columbus lived. Inside Seville's cathedral are the remains of Columbus, or at least some of them. The rest are in Cuba and the Dominican Republic. This is a letter from Columbus to his son. At Seville's Archives of the Indies are documents dating to the start of Spanish colonization, including letters written by Columbus with his signature. And this one from 1492. This letter is an order of Queen Isabella this Columbus expert says it's from the Queen to the merchants of Seville. And it says basically that people have to facilitate Columbus to set up his ships to, for his first travel to America. Columbus actually sailed from Palos, 50 miles from Seville. There was this freshwater well, the Atlantic, and today this statue of him. At about 5 o'clock in the morning on August 3rd, 1492, Columbus and his crew went down there to that well. They drew 500 casks of fresh water. And then they walked just a few yards out there to where the three ships were waiting, and they set sail for the New World. I don't think it's a particularly brilliant page of Spanish history. There's a movement in Spain opposed to the celebration. They are making t-shirts depicting, says this man, the misery caused by Spain. That wonderful period of Spanish history was based on the exploitation, the exploitation of Indians, on the killings of Indians. For better or worse, next year marks 500 years since Columbus reached the New World. And like no place else in the world, Seville's the place to be. In Seville, Spain, I'm Paul Ryan. Well, tomorrow we'll look at some of the events planned for our part of the hemisphere next year. All right. That's uh, Friday, live at 11. But coming up next, a real zoo around here in more ways than one. In more ways than one. Pretty soon, <laughs> you, you and I are going to monkey around in a couple of minutes. That's what I understand we're going to do. An exciting first visit from our friends at Metro Zoo is just ahead. So stay with us. Live at 11 continues. The Five Star Professional Championship Rodeo is here in Davie, bringing you and your family the best in rodeo action. This Friday and Saturday night at 8 p.m. Come and enjoy a thrill-a-minute rodeo entertainment with professional cowboys competing in seven rodeo events featuring bull riding, bucking bronx, steer wrestling, cowgirl barrel racing. A music company. Don't be home without one. And welcome back to Live at 11. Larry King, Phil Donahue, Vladimir Posner, Stone Crabs, mm -hmm. and now... An orangutan. <laughs> Very friendly from show. the Metro Zoo. And Ron McGill is here to uh, 
tell us all about Pongo. He was actually really still during the break, and you said he watched. I guess. <laughs> no, this, is, this is wonderful because I'm glad he's doing this now. <laughs> to show people, people tend to look at Pongo all the time and they go, oh, wow. how cute, how no, wonderful. They don't realize he's like the little demon child in disguise here. And uh, it leads people to believe that, oh, they make great pets and such, yeah. and that's probably the worst, nice. worst belief you could have about an animal like this. You know, I've had really terrible experiences with the orangutans and apes. They always go on me. I mean, <laughs> I walked by one place where they had, not Metro Zoo, where they right. had this big ape. He was much a mile away, but he got me anyway. And then I went by a llama when they used to have it at Crandon Park. He spat on me. But that's and why that, he's wearing diapers. He's got diapers that's, on this one's time. wearing I always get that. There's something strange going I'll on. I'll tell you, we did, a, we did a promotional with Tom Randall's down here at the station. We didn't have the diaper on, and we regretted it. Really? Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> this Pongo? Pongo's a little over a year right now mm -hmm. and he's showing that he's Ooh, it was just kind of restless. analogous to the terrible twos in children uh -huh. yeah. uh, yes. and, and he, uh, <laughs> he, he he can stir your patience every now and then but relatively speaking being an orangutan he's much calmer than let's say a chimp would be a chimp would be screaming and hey, don't even think about how, that, going for your glasses. How, big gonna, how big is he now how big is he gonna get well see right now he's about 20 pounds but being a male he can exceed 300 pounds in captivity they are the oh, largest wow. living what's called arboreal animal, the largest wow. animal that lives in a tree. How long do they live? They can live over 50 years, believe it or not. They've been documented in uh -huh. captivity over 50 years. And they're not as social as things like Hi. the chimps or the gorillas. And I've found in very large groups. But they have a, 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 a very decent structure as far as mother-infant uh, relationships. And the, the, the males get absolutely tremendously huge. Again, the females are only about half that size, full, mm -hmm. fully grown. Does, does he have a family? Actually, what happened was the reason, Pongo, the reason why we had, to, um, we had to raise him is because his mother rejected him. And this is something that is not terribly uncommon. She had developed uh, a mastitis, an infection in her breast where she could not mother raise him. So we had a mother raise him because that's something that we really do not choose to do. We always prefer to have a natural mother raise the offspring. Well, right. does an orangutan like a human child suffer in that case? Well, as a matter of fact, there's no way that we could duplicate the mm -hmm. mother's natural milk. Um, but really, with the, with the vitamin supplements and the vet care that he gets, it kind of makes up in captivity because he's not fighting the viruses, the parasites, and things that would fight in a while. What, so what does um, he have in his Pongo. formula? And he he has, has formula. Right now he's already starting on solid foods. They make uh -huh. a commercial that's called a monkey chow, even though this is not a monkey, a common misconception. Oh, look at that face. Anything that doesn't have a tail cannot be a monkey. Is that the only oh. difference? Yeah, that's basically the difference. These are what are called apes, and it's a completely different oh. family. Do they, uh, I noticed that you're handling him and he never even tried to bite you. Do they bite? I mean, they uh, can bite, and they can bite intensely. Uh, that's something that people don't realize. Again, it's a common misconception. Oh, I want to have one of those as a pet. What a horrible mistake it could be. An adult like this, uh, I mean, not to be graphic or anything, would take your arm off and beat you with it. Well, I'm just looking at his teeth, and, and he's only, uh, what, how old? He's only a little over a year right now. And he's got teeth that big. They get a lot bigger. Wow. <laughs> and he's strong. He's very powerful. Yeah. People don't realize how powerful they are. I've seen adult orangutans take coconuts and break them in their, in their bare hands. Have you been Amazing. bitten by him? I have not Amazing. been. No, oh, he's bitten me, but not aggressively. What he does yeah. is he gets restless. It's like a child like having now. a temp temper tantrum. <laughs> uh, we got to run. You're going to be back to... next week? I hope so. All right. All right. We'll Thank see you. Ron McGill, care, curator, pleasure. assistant curator of Metro Zoo. Thanks for right. Thank you. Here. Thanks, Pongo. <laughs> Still ahead, Fidel Castro's on a roll and uh, headed to a bathroom near you. We'll explain that one when Live at 11 continues. These fully loaded 1991 grocery carts are comparatively priced from week to week, but have very different features. The one on the left offers better handling at checkout, more food options, and your own personal driver. Compare large green bell peppers, 33 cents a pound, or Publix USDA Choice Porterhouse Steak, $3.99 a pound, and limited edition Age of Discovery collector plates, posters, and calendars. Get a fresh start. Get your money's worth at Publix. Every day, we face situations in which a little extra care could have avoided being in an accident. Unfortunately, accidents do happen. At Cohen & Cohen, we have been helping accident victims since 1970, and we may be able to help you. If you're injured in any type of accident, one simple phone call to Cohen & Cohen can help answer questions regarding your legal rights. Call the attorneys at Cohen & Cohen now at 1-800-33-COHEN. That's 1-800-33-COHEN. With Medicare and more, the Medicare alternative backed with the security of Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. What you don't get is just as important as what you do get. Here's what you don't get. There's no Medicare Part A deductible. No Part B 20% co-payments. No claim forms. No clinics. And best of all, there's no monthly premium charges. That's right. You don't pay any premiums. 
Call this toll-free number for free information on Medicare and more. You'll also like what you do get, like coverage for routine office visits and hospitalization, 1,800 physicians to choose from, plus prescription drugs and dental and vision benefits. Call now for free information. Call toll-free 1-800-777-2308 for free information on Medicare and more from Health Options, the health maintenance organization subsidiary of Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. There's no obligation. That's 1-800-777-2308. Charles Manson's Hatchet Man, living and loving it up on your money. Now it can be told. Now it can be told with Geraldo Rivera, weekdays at 4 on Channel 4. Well, next time you go to the supermarket, keep a lookout for Cuba's Fidel Castro. That's right, I said Fidel Castro. You'll see him there soon, and why is that, Bob? Well, Carmen Diaz Fabian, former publisher of El Geraldo, is it Geraldo or? El, El Heraldo. Heraldo. But it's okay. El Heraldo of Broward good, is printing good. up, and I get this, toilet paper with Fidel Castro's face on each sheet. Now, she says the paper will help relieve the frustration and sadness they feel about being separated from their families. How? Now she says, I want to get this right, and we're quoting, we're quoting here. You look at the toilet paper and say, there you go, Fidel, down the toilet. Now we're not exactly sure how soon the toilet paper is going to be available, but it will cost you almost $5 to flush Fidel. That's kind of a bargain, isn't it? $5? It is. Gee, what a bargain. <laughs> well, on to other, also about Cuba, but uh, this is a different topic. Uh, this book I'm holding is called Portrait of Cuba. Let me just open it up so you can see some of the pictures in here. Can you see that? I don't know if... He's got some pictures already. Okay, well, Bob, here you can look at that thing right. in the meantime. Pictures from a spectacular new book of the island put together by Dr. Wayne Smith. And tomorrow, live at 11, he'll be here to tell us more about them. We'll talk live with a psychologist whose attitude is, if it ain't broke, break it. Hmm, that's different. I like his sense of adventure, if nothing else. And we're going to have more food. We're going to have a first-class chef here to show us what a lot of South Florida chefs are doing to help provide meals on wheels for the elderly. That, some weekend activities, and maybe a few surprises, for sure a few surprises, sure. tomorrow, sure. live at 11. Coming up next on the Channel 4 News at noon. South Floridians are wading into day three of this soggy weather. We'll have live reports on the situation out there. All that water can make you sick if you're not careful. We'll tell you where to boil water if uh, you need to. And the Thomas hearing set to begin again. And with the help of this woman, it's bringing sexual harassment to the headlines. And calling all Stone Crab fans, a famous mm. South Florida eatery back in business. Mm. You saw it here first. Mm. You'll see more later on. These stories. Bite before I go over, mm. that's okay with me. Right. You guys well, are on a roll. We're also going to have. <laughs> wait, I'm Sorry. not through. We're also going to have an exclusive report on the beginning of the Communist Party Congress in Cuba. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us live at 11. While spending our usual Sunday afternoon together, my dear friend in...